July of 2020, the Cabrillo College Board received a request to rename the college in response to widespread national social unrest and critical analysis of the college's namesake. In recognition of the concerns of our faculty, staff, students, and administrators, we established a process to explore the request. To do this, a board subcommittee was authorized to explore the name and to eventually recommend to the full board a proposal as to whether or not the name should be changed. The subcommittee then assembled a task force to create a process for exploring this type of institutional change. The process includes this series of public events so that we can all learn about the history of the namesake, the decision to name our college after him, and how his legacy is affecting the community that we serve. We are guided by our commitment to the mission of the college, to research-based decision-making process where diverse perspectives are considered and to engaging with campus stakeholders and the larger community in respectful dialogue. Ultimately, what we learn through these events, coupled with community feedback, will help formulate our recommendation regarding the request to change the name of the college. I want to note that the board will not be making a final decision on this issue until the fall semester of 2021. There are other community listening sessions that will be scheduled later this year to engage with students and the community's, uh, community members. So we invite you to join us in learning more and encourage your comments um, in, the, in the online survey that Matt has already described and he'll, he'll say a little bit more about now. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Matt Wettstein, the President and Superintendent of Cabrillo College. Thank you, Christina, and thanks for your leadership along with Adam Spickler in, in the subcommittee for all the great work that you've been planning. I wanna welcome everyone again to the fourth in our series of talks. Uh, tonight, um, we're exploring whether or not the college should be named after Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo and really pleased to have tonight student voices as our, our main perspective for the evening. Before we begin, uh, I just want to cover some ground rules and do some introductory remarks and then we'll kick it off. We've got two great lead faculty members who helped to organize this event tonight. So I want to extend my thanks to communication studies professors Sky Gentili and Kendall Souter for the great work that they've done in helping to organize um, these student perspectives tonight. Assisting them will be several other faculty who are gonna be participating along with students. Um, we have anthropology professor, Dusty McKenzie. We have history professor, Enrique Buelna, political science professor, Nick Rall, uh, and English professor, Adela Najaro here as well. Naharo, excuse me, Adela. Thank you all for your work too. But the real stars tonight are of the show are our students. Uh, and so in total, you're probably gonna hear from about 20 different student voices through the course of the evening uh, who've contributed essays or speeches or segments of, of either to tonight's presentation. So one note before we get started, you'll find that the student perspectives run predominantly in favor of a name change, not all, but predominantly. So the voices tonight may not be a true representation of all of our students, but they're drawn from a number of different sections across our spring classes. So they do re reflect some perspectives of um, I would say the younger population in our county. So to the extent that they might expose a gap between um, the younger generation versus older generation in our county, I think it's really enlightening to hear the voices that they bring and the perspectives that they share. And as we've said in prior sessions, what we hope to get out of these sessions, and Christina mentioned this earlier, is exposure to different viewpoints and learning and an ability to grow and learn how other people think about these topics. We have a pre and post survey that we'd like you to do. So I've been posting the pre-survey later at, towards the end, I'll start to post uh, asking you for your opinions after the, um, some of the um, sessions have been presented by our students. So we ask you to remain muted uh, throughout the lecture, refrain from using the Q&A tonight. We're gonna have a lot of different perspectives and um, we may not get to Q&A tonight, but if we do, we'll, we'll address them towards the end of the session. 
So with that, with that, I want you to sit back, enjoy the stars of the show, our students. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over now to Sky Gentilly and Kendall Souter. Thank you, Matt. Kendall, go ahead and share the screen, perfect. All right, so um, go ahead and change it, my love. So basically, tonight we're gonna to look at the introduction and welcome, which Matt just offered. The main event are going to be our student voices and then concluding thoughts from Matt and kind of next steps. So we originally had a couple of things for an opening. Normally I have a blessing and that blessing was not offered to me because we have not done justice to this name exploration conversation. And so I hope to get a blessing in the future come fall. So we've offered a, a poem that's behind me. My name is Sky Gentilly and I've been teaching full-time at Cabrillo College since 2005. And at present, I'm the chair of communication studies. And we have two intentions. We have an intention as uh, educators and we have an intention for this event. Our intention for educators is to offer room and space for our students to understand inquiry, understand questioning, understand research and begin to find their voice on issues that matter in their life, in their community, in their family, in their relationships and all of it. For this event, our intention is to create space for students willing to present their novice for some, extensive for others, and all that's in between, exploration. Folks already are questioning their own experience in terms of what they put together for tonight's event. That's what we like. We should never be settled up. So tonight we offer a space for our students to vulnerably share and we are going to receive what they offer with the spirit of inquiry and not a spirit of commentary. Go ahead and flip for me, love. In my classes, and this isn't from me, it's from people much smarter than me, um, Glenn Singleton and other, and other folks, um, the courageous conversation, but it's been labeled many other things, difficult dialogues, and then, right, whatever, the language changes. I'm asking that we manage our impulsivity. I'm asking that we allow ourselves to move towards our own razor's edge of discomfort. And for some of us, it's right here. For others, it's here. And all of that is okay. So allow yourself to be uncomfortable, but stay engaged. Allow yourself to experience discomfort and begin to look at your own triggers and what information that might offer for you. And then the spirit of questioning and inquiry because all of that stuff that your body offers you gives you some information. And that's the information we wanna put forth to our students. Hopefully all of next year, I'm hoping that we extend this decision-making because I want it to be embedded into every single dingle thing we do at Cabrillo College in terms of curriculum, in terms of meetings, in terms of strategic plan, in terms of our mission, in terms of what we do every day with our students. So that's our intention and I turn it over to you, Kendall. The disclaimer, you're up, love. You're muted. Sorry about that. So um, President Matt Wedstein already alluded to the idea that this isn't representing all of the student voices that we have on campus. In fact, this is a very small fraction. And so we just want to put out there that this is really just students who are willing to be brave and step up their viewpoint in public. And we are not trying to represent the entirety of student perspectives on campus. And we recognize that this is a conversation that's going to continue. And as Sky said, we hope that it piques your curiosity and gets you to think a little bit differently about the issues as well too. So it is my great pleasure to kickstart the main event of our student voices. We have a lot of wonderful student voices, both some recent alumni as well as current students, and we are very honored to share those perspectives with you tonight. We're gonna be kicking off our student perspectives with Edgar Ibarra Gutierrez, and he will be telling you a little bit about his perspective on the name change. So Edgar, if you're ready. <clears throat> Thank you, Kendall, for, uh, for the warm introduction. I guess uh, before I even start with, with my own introduction, I really just wanna be able to acknowledge the land that, we, that we're currently on. I wanna acknowledge the original people of this land, the Ohlone people, uh, 
the many tribes and many different bands that, that roam through this area. Just want to acknowledge them, but also acknowledge their descendants and wherever they're at, you know, wherever they're at today, either in their homes or anywhere, hoping that they have everything they need to thrive in our communities. I just really wanted to say that before I, I got started. Uh, my full name is uh, Edgar Ernesto Ibarra Gutierrez. I'm a current, uh, I'm a recent graduate of Cabrillo College. I graduated last spring and just right when, uh, you know, kind of everything was kicking off, right? And, uh, and this whole COVID pandemic, everything. So actually, uh, it's it's been very interesting, right? But uh, without you know, without further ado, uh, my I'm actually right now a current student at UC Davis. I'm majoring in communications. I'm also the leadership and program coordinator at MILPA, uh, which stands for Motivating Individual Leadership for Public Advancement, a community-based org that's focused on ending mass incarceration, uplifting people and community power, and centering and centering. Uh, above all else, the teachings of our elders and our, and, and our culture. Uh, but uh, what brings me here today, it's first and foremost, of course, it's the name change. It's actually been something that I've been following closely, monitoring, monitoring since the beginning, since kind of like, since actually the whole component and, and, and thought of just changing names, kick, uh, you know, like took over the whole country. And um, I've always, stepping into Cabrillo College, I, I would always ask myself, why is it called Cabrillo? You know, Cabrillo Highway, and uh, I've had some of those answers, uh, questions answered recently by some of these panelists. Some of the information that was provided, well, eh, not much to my liking. But you know, not, without further, uh, like, regardless of the situation, I actually uh, appreciated the perspectives. Uh, you know, but I will say something that just some of the thoughts that I really wanted to share with with other students and those who are watching is that this is not just an indigenous person's issue. This is an, an everyone's issue. This is all of us here that who live in our, in our county, in Santa Cruz County, who live in, 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 in every, any little part here or attend Cabrillo College. For those students who are in, attending all our pre-K uh, institutions, that, that's, gonna, that's something that an issue that's for them too, because potentially they're going to come to this uh, college at one point or another. So I just really wanted to say that it's, it's not just a few of us or a specific group. It has to be all of us. You know, it has to be all of us chiming in. It has to be all of us fighting for it, you know. It has to be collective liberation, collective effort at all at all costs, and uh, but we also need to be able to educate. You know, we need to also bring those conversations to the table at our, our own homes. Sometimes our moms, our grandmas, our grandpas might not even understand, or might even just kind of disregard. It. It's like, why do you want to change something that's already in place? And you might have to be the one uh, explaining this to your mom, to your grandma, your grandpa. You know, to some of the el older people in your family. So, really willing and pushing and encouraging each and every student who are out there watching to really push that line and, uh, and, and want to engage in those courageous conversations at home, not within a safe academic setting, but in, in those places where it actually might not be safe. You know, sometimes where actually you might be actually met with a, a lot of resistance, you know, but so but having the courage to come up and have that conversation is important. And sometimes that's going to be in our own home. And, uh, but what should be done? I've been thinking about this a lot. Quite, you know, it's been something in my mind. It's like, what should be done? And uh, yes, of course, the name should be changed. However, it has to go beyond just the mere symbolic name change. There has to be genuine uh, interest in just in reinvesting. You know, reinvesting not just in, in again in the name change, but in curriculum development. What would it look like to actually have Cabrillo College have a Native American Studies department? fully funded without having to worry about <laughs> potentially being shut down because of funding, right? What would it look like to actually engage some of the, the local communities, indigenous communities in our area consistently to get to get their opinion, you know, specifically some of the indigenous tribes here, you know, what would that look like? And actually having it in policy, you know, in, in through Cabrillo College's policy, somewhere in there having that in, in place that at all times when it does pertain to issues such as this, that we would engage those communities first and foremost and, you know, reimburse them, you know, actually, you know, pay them for their service, you know, and that's first and foremost. But uh, again, before the actual name change takes place to, we need to talk to all local tribes. We need to talk to them, to all, all folks here locally. And uh, we need to come to a consensus as to like, what, what is it gonna be? Not just tokenize people, for sure, we cannot tokenize some of the folks. I know it's, I've seen some of the, and how the panel is gone, but I really want to emphasize that, that we cannot tokenize those folks who are 
who were actually uh, been impacted by colonization, oppression, and white supremacy at all at all fronts. You know, uh, a war of, of of extermination has been waged on them, and we got to be really mindful of that. So I really wanted to uplift that that we have to engage with these folks. You know, their descendants are still here; they're amongst us. Sometimes, you know, it just sucks that at one point or another, they were told to call themselves Mexican for the fear of being persecuted and and killed. So we we need to be really knowledgeable of that. And uh, I would say again that uh, in con just thinking about it, just in conclusion, that I really want to thank this body, these uh, y'all, for putting this together, this conversation for us as students to be able to share our perspective. It's important for all of us to engage in courageous conversation, uh, and understanding that again, it might not be safe at times, but that we have to engage it with a, uh, regardless of the situation, we're gonna have to have these conversations. And sometimes they might be in the most intimate places and that's gonna be our home. And again, we need to respect the process, whatever that might be. Uh, there's this concept that was shared with me by an elder, it's called your leak. And it's a Nahuatl term, Nahuatl phrase that means to move at the pace of your heart. Sometimes we get caught up in just moving at, at this pace. I like to call it that the, you know, sometimes it's it's the white man's pace. And, and you know, it, and, and when we get caught up in that, it's kind of like next thing you know, our, our whole life is just moving in, in a situation where it's like we're never gonna stop running. So we really gotta just slow down and reflect and move at the pace of our heart so we can get things done and and again engage these communities. And it's gonna take all of us, y'all. We have to talk to our grandmas, we have to talk to our moms, we have to talk to the African American community. We have to talk to the Latino community, Hispanic, Latinx, uh, LGBTQ community. We have to talk to everybody. We have to ensure that that we, we're contacting and um, communicating with everybody who has a stake at this, who will be attending this college at one point or another and letting them know that this conversation is really important. Uh, it's gonna actually, you know, our children, you know, my, potentially my little cousins, my nieces, my, my my nephews, everybody, or my children, they're all gonna come here and uh, I would really want to have a name, but also a school who not just through its name, but its intentions are really gonna represent them, uh, represent their, uh, represent uh, the best interests of other community members that they might call friends. So just with that, I'm just gonna, again, appreciate Sky, Kendall, and everyone else who actually put together this presentation or just has been in the back, putting it together. And, you know, again, just thanking each and every one of you on this conversation should always keep on going. And it's, again, it has to go beyond a symbolic name change. It has to be, we need to reinvest. Uh, you know, I was told that at one point or another, just follow the money and, and it'll show you their values. So we need to budget our values at, at one point or another. Palabra. Thank you so much, Edgar. Thank you for opening up this discussion. And we really appreciate what you had to share. Next, we are going to hear from Justice. And Justice, whenever you are ready, we would love to hear what you have to share. Hi, um, good introduction. I could not have said it better myself. I noted to acknowledge that the land that I live on in Santa Cruz and the land that Cabrillo College is on is Mamutsun land, it's a Waswas land, it's a Lona land. Um, and I absolutely think that we should change the name of Cabrillo College to represent something more positive than colonialism, race history, and genocide. I believe that the only reason to maintain names like Cabrillo, Santa Cruz, Fremont, and other colonialist erasures of native names for the areas stolen from them is to do just that, to erase native cultures, histories, and their living stories while normalizing colonialism. A lot of my argument is based on content from English History 27A with professors Smith and Rushworth and the conversations with my peers in that class. Um, I noted this book, What Does Justice Look Like? by Wazi Atawan, who's a Dakota professor, author, and activist. The Dakota tribe is in Minnesota, but a lot of the concepts definitely still apply. In her book, she walks through the five standards for genocide outlined by the UN Convention. And meeting any one of them constitutes genocide. She outlines numerous examples of how Native Americans were and continue to be victims of various forms of all five. With this in mind, she goes on to compare sites of another genocide, the German concentration camps of the Holocaust, to Fort Snelling in Minnesota, where many of people were forced to live, work, and abandon their culture. While the specifics differ, the location was and is very similar in function to the California missions, once a site of genocide, including forced slave labor, intentional spreading of disease, and violent suppression of culture, and now a tourist attraction romanticizing the violent history. 
For example, SantaCruz.org describes Mission Santa Cruz as, quote, a hidden historical treasure and an enchanting starting point for a journey back in time, unquote. German concentration camps do not present their history this way, yet still serve to educate. There is no town named for a Nazi officer, no Hitler college. Why do we treat our country's genocide differently? Why do we think changing these names is erasing our history? And what does that say about what we want our perceptions of history to be? Um, on that note, I wanna bring up notes from the previous panel on April 13th. Dr. Kutcher Risling Baldi talked about how the, this discussion is not about Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, the man. Seeing the name of the college, most people, especially non-native people, don't consciously consider Cabrillo as a person and what he did and celebrate that consciously. Instead, we are surrounded by names of colonizers in our towns and streets and institutions and subconsciously come to view colonialism as more relevant and native cultures as a negatable minor detail. Why does it feel so out of the question to, to surround ourselves instead with native names? For example, Toy Otak, apologies for my likely gross misspelling, um, is, which means the place of the bumblebee was what the native people of the area called what we call Fremont Peak. Um, we could have towns and streets named for native figures like Toy Purina who was discussed in the last panel, a native woman who organized a massive rebellion against Mission San Gabriel. The other argument is a counter argument to the idea that Cabrillo should be viewed in the context of his time, like I see brought up a lot in this discussion. Dr. Martin Rizzo Martinez said in the panel, why do we judge, like we do judge history, that's why we study it. It is through criticizing history and criticizing the actions of people in the past that we are able to learn from history and avoid repeating those mistakes. So by saying that people like Cabrillo were simply acting in line with the expectations for their time period, we are normalizing violence and oppression and excusing it wherever it is normalized, including today. And that implies that in 150 or 20 years, it would be acceptable to say that Derek Chauvin or Jonathan Mattingly were simply men of their time. As Dr. Risling Bali stated, in every time period and with every act of oppression, there was and always is at least one person who knew and said that it was not right. This may be someone in the social group of the oppressor, such as Bartolome de las Casas, and it will always include those in the oppressed group. When we say we must judge those in history by the standards of their time, whose standards are we aligning ourselves with? Will we choose to accept the standards of Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo and excuse everything he did? Will we accept the standards of certain missionaries and condemn posting native people's heads on spikes, but accept massacring them in the first place? Or will we accept the standards of the native people who have known for thousands of years that colonist and European levels of violence, intensified resource extraction and dehumanization are wrong? Keeping our institutions, towns and streets named after colonizers romanticizes the violence they committed and normalizes the acceptance of oppression and violence. By saying we shouldn't judge Cabrillo or any other colonizer by modern moral standards is in itself erasing native cultures and the voices of the oppressed who have always known that genocide is wrong. Thank you, Justice. Next, we're gonna be hearing from Oli Jackson. Thank you so much, Kendall. Hi, everybody. My name is Oli Jackson. This is my third year at Cabrillo. I'm currently a physics major and I'm also the uh, president of the Women in Science and Engineering Club where we have a lot of discussions about how to make not only STEM but Cabrillo and the world in general more open and welcoming and inclusive of people of underrepresented communities. Um, so as a lifelong community member in Santa Cruz County, as a proud Cabrillo student and as a global citizen, I am in favor of the name change of Cabrillo College. Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo was a man who both participated in and heavily influenced the colonization of this area. And to quote the statement released from Cabrillo's name exploration committee, Cabrillo was a man whose roles in Cuba and Mexico led to what would be the modern day equivalent of cultural genocide, sex trafficking and slave ownership. So Juan Cabrillo is emblematic of the entitlement to indigenous land and bodies that colonizers felt. Changing the name of Cabrillo College is an opportunity to better reflect the goals and the mission statement of our institution. 
So our mission statement reads that Cabrillo College empowers students to be effective communicators, critical thinkers, and responsible global citizens with a commitment to quality and equity. So written into our mission statement is a dedication to equity. And in my time at Cabrillo College, I've seen how Cabrillo works to provide an equitable school environment, as well as leave space for students to challenge the school when that equitable environment is not found. And having our institution named after a man whose actions resulted in unimaginable harm to the indigenous population goes against Cabrillo's commitment to equity and a name change gives our institution the opportunity to better reflect our school's values. Um, not only that, but changing the name of Cabrillo College would also be an opportunity to better represent and honor the minoritized students who attend Cabrillo College. When underrepresented students at the school see its name and understand the history of oppression and colonization that Cabrillo impressed on this land, it's difficult not to see the multitude of other ways that institutions have contributed to their own marginalization. I believe that we owe it to Cabrillo's underrepresented students to have a school whose name doesn't recognize a man who contributed to the oppression of people of color and whose name isn't symbolic of Eurocentrist and white supremacist views. So again, I feel this name change to be an opportunity for Cabrillo to live up to its status as a Hispanic serving institution and to take further steps toward making Cabrillo College a humanizing space. Honoring our history as a nation that's committed unnumbered crimes against minoritized communities is not about continuing to give a platform to the oppressors, but it's about amplifying the voices of those historically oppressed. And I think that we can better honor the holistic history of this region by taking power away from the colonizing perspective of Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Up next, we have a video of a student perspective before we hear more live presenters. Hello, my name is Miguel Franco. Um, I'm a graduate from Cabrillo College. Um, I just want to show my support for the name change of Cabrillo College. I believe that the actions of Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo are unacceptable. Um, I believe that colonization is unacceptable and that to support the future of indigenous people, um, people of color and other marginalized folks that we need to stop highlighting uh, colonial figures like this and uh, move beyond that, move towards a more inclusive future and um, showing support for people of color, for marginalized people, for indigenous people. All right, thank you. And up next, we are going to hear from Dusty McKenzie sharing one of his students' perspectives. Thank you, Kendall. <clears throat> this is from Aliyah Glott. After learning about the history of Juan Cabrillo, I am strongly resolved in favor of changing the college name. Cabrillo first came to the New World in 1519 as a member of Hernan Cortez's army. On his 1542 expedition from San Diego to Point Reyes, the first known contact with coastal California indigenous peoples was made. Juan Cabrillo became rich off enslavement of native peoples in Guatemala gold mining and uh, may have even split up families in his position of power. Demonstrating his 16th century attitudes towards women, Cabrillo also took an indigenous woman as his common law wife and had several children. While I have embodied the sentiment that the name should be changed for a while, my opinions were recently reaffirmed whilst attending a Zoom presentation with historian Dr. Iris Ingstrand on March 18th, 2021. Shocking myself and many other participants, the presenter embraced values that were ethnocentric and racist. The speaker depicted a whitewashed version of history that devalued and denied native voices refuting acquisitions of murder, uh, slave trading, and sex trafficking that have uh, been made against Juan Cabrillo. Dr. Ingstrand said that Cabrillo himself seemed like a pretty good guy and brushing aside the lived experiences of native peoples stated that the word genocide just didn't apply to the Spanish motive. It has been said by Iris Ingstrand and others that we must consider Cabrillo's acts within their own historical context. Although this in no way excuses Cabrillo's actions, I agree that we can and should view history through the context of the past. However, 
Calibrating actions to their historical context also includes reframing the past to fit the values of the present. Therefore, if the college decides against changing the name, this will be a contradiction of this very argument. There are many possibilities for a new name for the college, such as Amamutsin College, Costanoa College, Sokel College, etc., that would uplift native voices and speak out against hate and genocide. Changing the college name will value the true human experience in all its multifaceted ways instead of whitewashing history. Thank you. And up next, we are gonna have Sky Gentili read for a student, Enrique Garcia. To have the name of a college named after a bloodthirsty villainous conquistador is just unjust and frankly unacceptable. For it sends a message to students, parents, and passerbys that the college does not challenge colonialism and does not support the native peoples of the Americas as a whole. In doing so, they are valuing the conqueror over the conquered instead of the other way around. It is valuing one history over another, one culture over another. If you should fail to act on changing the name of this college, your lack of action speak volumes. Do you want to be on the right side of history or not? It is up to you for you to decide. Thank you. And next, Sky is going to be introducing some COM4 students and some projects that they've been working on. Okay, so I have a group of students here representing various viewpoints, and some of them have argued that the, maybe they've even changed their viewpoint, but I told them no. No, you present what you have. So here's the deal. The assignment was this. Here's the charge. They were to create a policy claim. Should Cabrillo change their name? You pick a side. So you're going to hear students saying, therefore, I argue Cabrillo should change their name. Therefore, I argue Cabrillo should not change their name. The assignment was this. Five parts. Attention step with the claim at the end of should we change that name? Problem. Need step and they put their arguments of why they think we should change it or not change it. Then we move into a plan. I told them, don't worry about the plan. That's like outside the scope. So you're not gonna hear a lot of plans. The plan is up to us. The visualization would be what that could look like in the future, positive, negative, and then what's the opposing viewpoint. And then the action would be their concluding, also their beginning argument, their claim. Therefore I argue Cabrillo should or should not change their name. So you're gonna be hearing parts whatever they choose to share out of that full speech of the five parts, just so you understand, you're not gonna be hearing all the parts, but you're gonna be hearing what our students in argumentation and persuasion have been charged with. All right, Braulio, my dear, you are up next. Perfect. Hello, my name is Braulio Salgado. I am currently in uh, Sky's class and I'm pretty much just sharing my point of view. Uh, so who is Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo? To me, the name Cabrillo was nothing more than a name of a college which I attended, but I never really paid much attention to its origin or how it obtained its name. After asking previous classmates and friends what or who Cabrillo was, I understood that I wasn't alone in the same boat. To all of us, it was simply the name of a college and nothing more than that. After this class, I had, um, I had an idea of who Cabrillo was, but it wasn't until I saw the presentations and I did research on my own that I fully understood who he was. Cabrillo was a conquistador, a name applied to uh, many Spanish soldiers who were explorers. His name came to light when he served under Hernán Cortés. He fought as a soldier and helped defeat the Aztecs, but not by direct killing them. It was the smallpox that they had brought along that killed most of the Aztecs. After this, Cabrillo benefited from the encomienda, a system in which the King of Spain granted long-term leases of land that often came with the right use of forced indigenous labor. Because of this, he was able to take Guatemalans as slaves and use them to work in farms, mines, and shipyards. He then later traveled to a land in the port of San Diego, but never made it anywhere near the Santa Cruz area. So how is it that a college in the Santa Cruz community uh, ended up with his name? Back in 1959, when Cabrillo was founded, a news reporter named Wally Travy started throwing hints of his name, which actually stuck around, but it was never really, uh, but it wasn't really chosen until the end. So um, nobody really knew who Juan Cabrillo was, 
or what he had done. But since all of the rules, but since one of the rules for the college was that they have to choose a neutral name that didn't represent Santa Cruz or Watsonville, they rolled with it. Uh, before this event, Watsonville and Santa Cruz were pretty divided and they couldn't, uh, they wouldn't agree on anything. So this is probably one of the first and only things that they agreed on at, in their times. Uh, one of the issues with changing the name Cabrillo would be the time and the money that this would take to do. In my research, I learned that changing a name would take anywhere from 500 to up to a million dollars that could be given back to the community, to the Cabrillo students, especially during these hard times when uh, a lot of people are being laid off due to COVID. And even $100 could go as far as buying a book or helping them pay for essential needs such as food or water. Um, my resolution to this would be to have a plaque installed somewhere explaining his what he did, which was him being a slave owner, not just by changing the name, but by growing from it. Explaining to everybody what he did, uh, showing the community who he really was a slave owner, uh, and yeah, pretty much that's what I think that we would waste money by changing its name. Thank you so much for sharing your voice. Thank up you. Next, up next, we're going to hear from Candida. Candida, you probably need to unmute. Oh, I, I am on mute. Why is that? Uh, I just unmuted now. You're good. Go ahead, Candida. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. Yes, uh, my name is Candida Granados. Uh, I, um, I go by my initial P and I. Um, what makes a college great? I, 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 I can just imagine that many uh, diff uh, all, all kinds of uh, <laughs> a different um, uh, point of view might be there uh, in their mind, but uh, uh, oh my God, I might probably got in, in, into your, your thinking, right? <laughs> So it, but whatever that is, I respect that. To me, the reputation of an educational institution such Cabrillo College is not based on a conquistador history or background. It's based on the student's faculty success. You, the students and faculty make the college, not the name. As a student, I strongly oppose having to change the Cabrillo College name to something else. Just as Thomas Bertram Lins said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> um, that phrase to me, it means in other words, it waste, there is a, a waste of uh, resources which is money and time, <laughs> right? Um, Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo was, was a pioneer in the discovery of new land and contributed, contributed to the establishment of new societies in America. It's probably the reason why I'm here and many of us and where we are right now. Throughout the world, history has embedded its footprints and fingerprints, whatever human beings have ever been. We are fully aware that history can be sensitive, can be shameful, disgraceful, and hurtful as well. In this speech, I will provide evidence back, back at reasons and, and, and common sense about um, uh, the valuable resources that we have, and so many that have been destroyed from the beginning. You, if you just we think about centuries ago, uh, fifth, in the 1500s, middle of the 1500s, can you just think for a moment, uh, how did it look America? There were a lot of resources. There were a lot of resources and we don't wanna waste no more resources. History 
cannot be changed. History will say it's too much. I condemn the actions of the conquistadors and the European settlers because they exploited and, and, and enslaved the native people and snatched the land from the hands of their legitimate owners. But I don't think the name of Cabrillo College or any institution uh, a building uh, is necessary to be changed. To be changed. Um, Cabrillo College is well recognized. It's uh, recognized, and so the and so it is an educational institution, according to the peer review, academic journal, community college review, uh, college Cabrillo College. I it says that ranks in the top 20% best community colleges of California. And as far as I can remember, I saw it was a, a, a little over a, a hundred and one, if I'm not, if, if I'm right. 20% out of a hundred and one colleges, that's a lot. That is, is, a, is, is great reputation that this college has. Just changing the name of Cabrillo College will take a million dollars from a student's learning. I have heard from a student say, you know what? They will say they said that uh, you know they will provide uh, computers for us during, but uh, you know uh, there was a, a period of time that needed uh, computers, but then they said, you know, we never got it. They said they didn't have it because money is not there. So um, yeah, and. Uh, so, for example, uh, then there is uh, San, Francisco, San Francisco Chronicle, for example, reported on April 8, 2021, that, that, um, that uh, the San Francisco Board of Education hopes to avoid the destruction and, wa and wasteful expenditures of public funds and frivolous li li lit litigation. The, the resolution did not address many criticism of the, um, of the renaming efforts such as the price and process. That's according to, to, the, to the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, uh, so if you just think for a moment, if you just imagine for a moment what it will be like if, you know, if we continue making these unnecessary changes of focusing on something that is not broken, when, when there are things that can be possibly changed. I, I can just imagine some, the many things that, um, uh, that are very essential to, to pay more attention to it uh, uh, in the present, not to focus on uh, uh, centuries ago. The name, the name, the, you know, the name of the school is not broken. It's, 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 to me, it, it's history that is broken. Simple is that. Thank you very much, and excuse me for my from my um, uh, uh, <laughs> not the well pronunciation, but it's just 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 I wanted to uh, I wanted to uh, say thank you for giving me the opportunity to be part uh, of this um, uh, uh, of this topic and, and being a history of this of great America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Candida. And up next, we are going to hear from Tegan. Hi, everyone. Um, names are powerful, but do names define the object or does the object define the name? I'm a freshman at Cabrillo College and all of you are part of the community of Cabrillo College. The cost of the name change outweighs the benefits of changing the name. Therefore, I'm arguing that Cabrillo should not change their name. There is a controversy over the name of Cabrillo College. Some believe that by keeping the name Cabrillo, the school is representing immoral values. This is important to many because Cabrillo College has been a community college since 1959. Everyone who's ever gone to Cabrillo identifies with the name. 
Although it seems like this controversy should be contained to, yeah, to Cabrillo College, the students and staff who are currently attending Cabrillo, this topic actually extends far more to have everyone who has ever gone to Cabrillo College. Although it's important to think about the future. Will changing, will not changing the name taint the, taint Cabrillo College? Like will people think of Cabrillo College and only see the horrible things that Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo committed, such as massacring an entire village of Native, Amer of Native peoples? According to an SF Gate article by Gary Camilla, uh, Cabrillo came to America at the age of 13, and he learned the difference between the Spanish and the natives. Um, this was especially emphasized by the encomienda system, which he did participate in. However, Dr. Dr. Iris Instrin, a former history professor at San Diego, at San Diego University and a specialist in Spanish history, points out that it was the norm in those times. The cost of changing the name exceeds the benefits. Um, according to Brooks Keel, the pre a president of Augusta University in Augusta, Georgia, the cost of simply changing the names on their campus was $4 million. And they have a student size of 9,000. Cabrillo has a student size of over 10,000, just to put it in per perspective. And that doesn't even include changing the names on all the jerseys or any other article that Cabrillo has its name on. The amount of money that this endeavor requires could be put to more positive areas that could benefit the students of Cabrillo College. Thank you. Thank you, Tegan. Up next, we're gonna hear from Gabe. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Hey everyone, thank you for having me. This is very exciting for me as a communication major to present to such a wide audience, the largest audience I've ever spoken to so far, so I'm quite excited about it. Cabrillo College has an extensive history of inclusivity for everyone. I learned this firsthand after I came back to Cabrillo after a long directionless hiatus to take public speaking for self-improvement reasons. I discovered a passion for public speaking and the support of faculty made me realize that my thoughts that I was just lazy and stupid were false. They taught me I just had a different way of learning and encouraged me to find my strengths and weaknesses and use them to my advantage. I realized Cabrillo College truly cared about the success of their students. I understand and I am sympathetic to the ethical concerns regarding our college's name. However, I fear the substantial cost it would take to change the name may be implemented into our student fees and possibly the taxpayers of our community. Even if the president ensures us the cost won't affect us, if he has a stash of money that would cover it, I would much rather see that money used to educate our community on the indigenous tribes who inhabited this land before colonization. Maybe a museum? To me, the name Cabrillo doesn't stand for a Spanish explorer the majority of people in this community have never even heard of. It's the name of a college that has served our community for 62 years. It stands for inclusivity. It stands for multiculturalism. It stands for freedom of expression and open discussion like we're doing now. I hope when I receive my diploma, it says Cabrillo College on it. I'm a proud Cabrillo student, not because of who it may have been named after, but because it was the name of an institution that helped me find something powerful within myself I never knew was there. Right now, I'd like to return the favor. Cabrillo College, if you feel that changing your name is your way to show the world that you are not complicit in white supremacy and cultural genocide, and that you are inclusive of all races, genders, sexual orientations, and disabilities. You've been doing it this whole time. Your legacy in our community speaks for itself. I'm gonna wrap this up with something I like to tell people. It's okay to get lost from your path. The nice thing about having a path is that it's always right there for you to find your way back to. So change the name, don't change the name. I still wanna thank Cabrillo College for helping me find my way back to my path. Thank you so much, Gabe. And up next, we are gonna hear from Alexis. Hi there. Um, so I'm 
um, a student in Sky's class, and I'm also a high school senior right now, dual enrolled at Cabrillo. Um, so much younger than all the other people. But um, I just wanted to start off by asking a quick question. Um, how important is it, as, is it for us, for the name of our school to reflect our morals? The name of an institution represents its students and the students of an institution represent its name. Now, let me ask you this, who do we want to represent? Right now, at this moment, the students of Cabrillo Community College represent Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo. Nick Ar Ibarra, sorry, writer for Lookout Santa Cruz states that, quote, historical records show that Cabrillo took part in the massacre of an indigenous village as a teenager. Cabrillo's service to the Spanish crown was awarded with a land grant in Guatemala, where he grew wealthy through mines and farmland work by slave labor. Even in even his famed expeditions, three ships were crewed in part by indigenous slaves, end quote. Cabrillo's director of student equity and success states that Rodriguez Cabrillo was a war criminal who systemically profited, profited from the genocide and oppression and sexual, sexual exploitation of indigenous people. Now, let me ask you the same question again. Who do we want to represent? Do we want to represent a man who ended lives, caused grief within families and hardships for native tribes? Do we want to represent a man who sexually exploited women? Though I'm only a high school senior, I'm a student and athlete for Cabrillo College. Each student athlete at any school represents an institution when they play. Playing for a name and a person whose life encompassed actions I do not agree with, nor do many of my peers, puts myself and other students in a hard position. Changing the name of Cabrillo is something that, to something that reflects its students and their positive impacts on the community is an action that needs to be taken. On the contrary, some people such as Dr. Ingstrand say that there's no reason Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo would have wanted to participate in genocide, murder, or use slavery. She states that the connections and trades Cabrillo and his men made with natives were important to them and there was never a reason they would want to end those. Torturing indigenous people would have given Cabrillo more control over them. So, in, so Dr. Ingstrand's statement can be proved false. In a document published by Cabrillo's superintendent, board president, a subcommittee member and a subcommittee chair, they state that, quote, we reject these statements made during her lecture that failed to give credence, credence to the pain caused by cultural genocide, slavery, and the subjunction of women and indigenous people not only in Central America and Mexico at the time, but anywhere and in any period of history. We reject them as Eurocentric anti-Indigenous interpretations of history that lacked cultural humanity. Um, that's all I have right now, but um, I definitely also wanted to point out that a lot of people were mentioning about the price, and that is something that I considered and kind of made me flip back and forth, honestly, between what side I felt like I was on. Um, but I think that putting money towards changing the name is putting money towards the community because um, as a community, a lot of us are involved in this school, whether we attend or um, not. And I think that changing the name would uh, make a positive impact. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alexis. And we are gonna be continuing to hear from some more COM4 students. So next we are gonna be hearing from Dan Fulton. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo may be the reason we have a Pacific coast. He set out to find China and landed in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. He made his way up the coast and landed in San Diego on Thursday, September 8, 1542. He worked up the coast discovering the Monterey Bay as well. He actually never set foot in Santa Cruz County. He is remembered for his contribution as an explorer and for discovering the Pacific Current and the West Coast. Changing the name because of things that were common and acceptable at the time are unacceptable and outlawed now is like comparing apples and oranges. Things have changed so much and people are really different today. My experience tells me that things evolve and change and get better. The discovery of the West Coast and the Pacific Coast is a big deal. To hold someone accountable for things that happened over 500 years ago and evaluate and disregard their achievements because of that is really a far-fetched way of thinking to be. 
my opinion on this is to is not to change the name and respect the accomplishment accomplishments of the Spaniard Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo. Yes, 500 years ago, there was bloodshed. And yes, there were workers that were enslaved, but that behavior was common of the times. This type of conflict and progress using people to work had been going on for centuries and was just a product of the times and nothing more. As a valuable person in history, Cabrillo made a landmark discovery. He should be recognized for it and not be condemned because of century old practices that are now extinct. His discovery of the West Coast was really an accident, but a pleasant surprise. It allowed us to really find a new world and expand. We should thank him rather than condemn him. I don't like too much change like this. I would rather see us uphold the Cabrillo name and recognize this explorer, soldier, and discoverer as a valuable member of history who really contributed a lot to our world. It would be really nice to see things with tolerance and perspective rather than just to disqualify a person for doing what people had always done for centuries after all this happened over 500 years ago and things were much different then. Thank, Thank you. you for letting me share. Thank you, Dan. And up next, we are going to have Nick Rowell read another student perspective from a COM4 class. From student Leilani Perez. Cabrillo College's name ties to a figure in history that was known as a Spanish explorer whose accomplishments surround gruesome events. Cabrillo College used the name Cabrillo as a form of recognition and conceded in using the historical figure as someone significant, but there's more information that carries in the use of this last name. The discovery of California contains a timeline of events that occurred through the exploration of the coast. Specifically, indigenous tribes were attacked, dismembered, wounded, murdered, and their land was conquered. Historically, Juan Rodrigo Cabrillo gained recognition through the discovery of California and is best known as a Spanish explorer who partook in a voyage of exploration throughout the coast, joined in on the gruesome bloody murders of Indians, followed with his engagement in the conquest of Cuba. Notably, Cabrillo College named the school after the conquistador due to his discovery of California, which promoted the use of his last name to be used as the symbol of an important figure. Though Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo discovered California, the school being named being named Cabrillo College leads to a controversy of what being a remarkable figure means, because through, the discover, through this discovery, Indians were killed off from their land by this person that's historically recognized as someone momentous. The history that follows Cabrillo should be taken into consideration because the historical facts of indigenous groups being attacked and killed over their land shows how unfair this would be if the name remained there. A school should represent diversity and a community that seeks to promote an environment that embodies all students. Although Cabrillo became known for the accomplishment and discovery of California, there are events he partook during his time which discredits his finding throughout his exp expedition. In order to seek change during these times, Cabrillo should begin the process of changing the school's name for the following reasons. The name of a school signifies much more than just a sign. An environment of learning should not promote names that do not represent equality, justice, or diversity. Since the college first used the name of Cabrillo as a form of recognition of a historical figure's quote accomplishments, there should be a change of name that represents a non-problematic, noteworthy, remarkable figure. Across the states, most schools have begun the process of renaming schools which should also be done here. Cabrillo College should reconsider the name and the change, excuse me, and change the school's long time title. A simple solution would be to have students send in their ideas and vote. Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo holds history in California, but his accomplishments do not mean anything if his actions were done in order to kill and conquer the land of the indigenous tribes. Thank you so much, Nick, for reading Leilani's perspective. Up next, I'm gonna be reading the perspective from a longtime student, Bill McCarthy. 
Imagine that you are at a dinner party with your friends and you are bragging about your son or daughter who has recently graduated from Cabrillo College. Somebody at the table says, I was just reading in the Santa Cruz Sentinel the other day and according to Kofi Akinjade, the director of student equity and success, that Juan Cabrillo was a war criminal who profited from the genocide and the oppression of indigenous people. Why would you ever let your child go to a school that is named after this man who grew wealthy through mines and farmland worked by slave laborers? We need to change the name of the school. It is an embarrassment that we are using the name Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo at such a fine junior college that we have here in Santa Cruz. I know that he discovered California, but he did on the backs of all the slaves that he used to run his ships. Cabrillo was a soldier of fortune who caused destruction to people and culture wherever he went. I think a simple solution would be to change the name of Cabrillo College to Santa Cruz Junior College. I understand that it would cost millions of dollars to change the name, but that is a small price to pay for the constant reminder that our school is named after a slave trader. Every year we do not change this name is another year that we have to live with this problem. Imagine driving down Soquel Drive and seeing a bright new sign that says, welcome to Santa Cruz Community College. This name has no skeletons in the closet, no reason to feel ashamed about a name, um, about a name on a college that people despise. It also gives people from out of town another reason to visit the college to see if they want to enroll, attend a play, or go and watch a sporting event without the stigma of Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo hanging over the head of the college. The simple solution is to change the name of Cabrillo College to Santa Cruz Junior College. It seems to work well for UCSC. This way we can rid ourselves of our association with this man and by naming the school Santa Cruz Junior College, everybody in the state will know where the school is located. I think that this idea, um, I think taxpayers who, um, who have supported funding for Cabrillo would get behind this idea. We could then put this on the ballot and taxpayers could help us pay for the cost of renaming the school. Okay, and up next, we are going to be hearing from Michael Pebworth sharing Emily Beadnell's perspective. Hello, everybody. Uh, here is what Emily Beadnell had to say. Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo benefited off the exploitation of the Native American people he encountered. Our college is named after this man, a man that never even set foot in Santa Cruz County, let alone Monterey. Cabrillo College needs to change the name of the school. For a county and small town that prides itself on being inclusive, free-spirited, and open-minded, for the most part, why should we stand for our school to be named after a man who benefited off the exploitation of Native Americans? In the video of the historian talking about Cabrillo and his accomplishments, she does a good job of not answering questions about the bad things he's done and instead talks about the magnificent ships he ordered people to build for him. The solution is to have the name changed. Yes, way back in the 1500s, the world worked very differently than it does now. But the reality is that Cabrillo never really made a personal or positive impact this far north compared to the Santa Barbara area. The school, if not named after our town, should be named after something of importance to our county. I think the easiest and best solution would be to name the college after our county. Our local university is named after the county. Why shouldn't the community college? I can picture driving up to the campus and seeing a sign that reads, welcome to Santa Cruz Community College. Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo has got to go. Time for a new name that you can proudly display on your diploma and that the county can be proud of. Thank you, Michael, for that reading of Emily's perspective. And up next, we are going to hear from Dusty reading Cindy's perspective. The entire state of California has an expansive history in Spanish colonial violence and terror. We should be reminded of this each time we ride along the historic Camino Real 101 highway and its many bell markers that signaled a path between the still standing Spanish missions, 21 in total, and the Presidios, all sites of ecological and spiritual destruction. Juan Cabrillo was an active participant and benefactor of the Spanish invasion of indigenous lands in California, 
and he is often misremembered uh, mis uh, mis as having been the first to discover the Western Pacific coast that California is on. To say that the community college, known as Cabrillo College, named after a violent Spanish explorer, should reconsider its name and legacy is, long, is, a, is a long overdue call to action. It is grossly irresponsible to negate the voices of past and present students, faculty, and community members who feel disrespected with a name like Cabrillo and the historical significance the name carries. More importantly, to the indigenous people of California who still live with the effects of their systematic erasure and a violent history that started when Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo stole their land, livelihood, and freedoms. At minimum, it is the duty of public institutions in the state of California to do more to protect and preserve cultural heritage, to respect the critiques of others when the integrity of the institution is in question, and to restore land ownership to its rightful stewards. The Cabrillo Board of Trustees should actively seek to reconcile and right the wrongs of the institution currently serving as Cabrillo College by changing the name of the institution and any associating entities to a name that is anti-racist, anti-colonial. More importantly, the Cabrillo Board of Trustees should return the land that the affirmation institution sits on um, to its rightful owners, the Amamutsan Tribal Band, as a small but significant way to rectify the wrongs of genocide inflicted personally by Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo and the state of California. A name change that represents anti-racist, anti-colonial, engages the audience with respect and embodies cultural diversity, improves the institution as a whole. However, representation in a name is not enough, and so the institution must promise to embody what the new name represents by changing policies around curriculum, staffing, and all resources available to the community. Envision walking through a new campus with all aspects of Cabrillo's uh, legacy removed and instead replaced with something that can represent the honor, uh, represent and honor the people of the land who were here long before Cabrillo. I call on the Board of Trustees and the administration of the present Cabrillo College to renounce the aforementioned name. I call for the returning of stolen land that the college is built on to its rightful owner, the Amamutsan Tribal Band. I call for transparency and accountability by the Board of Trustees to uphold anti-racist and anti-colonial values in an academic as well as a community public space by offering resources and <clears throat> Uh, reparations to the indigenous people of the land which the college stands on. Thank you so much for that reading. And that will um, end the COM4 student perspectives. We are now going to transition to hearing from some of our English student voices, and Adela and Enrique are going to lead that part. Hi, everybody. Yes, I'm just trying to. Uh, here we go. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Dr. Adela Najarro, and I am the instructor for English 2 in the Stars and Puente learning communities. And the entire semester, we have been considering all the arguments around uh, should Cabrillo College change its name. Um, and we've done it in discussion boards, we've done it, made familia posters, and we just recently finished writing argumentative essays. And so, um, what I present here today is are the students who volunteered to share their perspective with you. And um, I, at the end of our talk, I will also have this document available for you in the chat. So since we won't be able to see every student's um, uh, contribution, you can read it online because you'll have the link. Okay, so um, first I would like to read the contribution or perspective from Asustena Serna. 
Growing up, we are taught to have an opinion or sort an idea over a subject. As you grow older, these subjects only become more serious and controversial. Cabrillo College has been titled by its name for years now. However, while many students and faculty believe it's just a name, behind it is a story that is much more than that. Cabrillo was named after a historical figure named Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo. While many of us do not know who this man was, he was an inhumane individual. The reason behind this idea is because he was not just a slave owner, but involved in genocide and sex trafficking. Cabrillo committed these cruel actions towards the indigenous people during this time, and keeping the college's name is only an act of disrespect towards those who, are led, who were led to their death. Cabrillo College, in fact, needs to alter its name because it continues to honor a violent historical figure who caused harm and death to innocent indigenous people. If Cabrillo College were to change its name, this would not only bring justice to the deaths that were caused because of him, but also we will no longer be honoring a cruel individual who does not deserve recognition. All right, uh, thank you, Dr. Adela. My name is Enrique Buelna and I am an instructor in the history department. And I would like to now introduce the perspective of Ines Martinez. As a first year Cabrillo student, I have noticed that most of my peers are Latinos who have historical ties to uh, with Native American roots. After discovering who the person that the college was, uh, I was attending was named after, I learned that it was a man named Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, uh, who gained all of his wealth and power off of the labor of Native Americans and their land. Juan Cabrillo was a Spanish explorer who traveled to the coast of California in the 1500s. Today, this has been brought to the community's attention, calling out how using this person's name as a college title is inappropriate and must be changed. There may be people who might disagree, but changing Cabrillo's name is paramount since it does not reflect the standards and goals of the school, nor does it show respect to our community. Renaming Cabrillo College will allow students to feel more welcomed. Therefore, we must change the name of our school to match the school's goals and respect our community. The perspective of Elizabeth Gonzalez. When I think about Cabrillo College's name, I think about how it is known as being one of the best community colleges in the United States. Not only this, but Cabrillo has an outstanding reputation for the amount of support it provides for the students. As soon as Cabrillo College is brought up, everyone already knows what school it is and how great of a school it is. This being said, if Cabrillo College decides to change its name, not only its reputation, but its history will go along with it too. People might say that because of Juan Cabrillo's horrific history, Cabrillo College's name should be changed. They may also say that instead of spending so much money from the school itself, they could simply fundraise money. This way, the school can continue spending its money on programs, clubs, etc., and not interfere with the school programs. Removing the name and changing it to something different would be horrible for those who graduate from there. They would be stuck with a certificate from a school whose name no longer exists. All right, so next we have the uh, perspective of Phoenix Rumbau. Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo is Cabrillo College's namesake, and Cabrillo, the conquistador, has become controversial due to his history. He fought with Cortes against the Aztecs, among other uh, uh, indiscretions. Cabrillo College was named over 50 years ago due to a name lottery won by a resident of Aptos. At the time, there had not been much concern about the reason for the school's name. Although this name has seemed fine for years, it may be time to change it. Cabrillo College bears the name of a man who never set eyes on Aptos or Northern California. Talk of Juan Rodriguez uh, Cabrillo having had slaves casts a shadow on the Cabrillo College name. Cabrillo, the explorer, discovered much of California, including San Diego, but he never made it to Northern California. There is no connection or relevance between the conquistador right, and a junior college. 
It might be uh, understandable if the college named after Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, right, wore a place in California that he discovered. Cabrillo was a conquistador. So why should a school be named after him? It would probably, probably be more correct to name the school after the local tribes, but we should always remember the past, uh, the past injustices of our country's past and present. And here is the perspective of Jacqueline Rocha. Cabrillo College is a school that prides itself in being open to all people, regardless of race, age, sexuality, religion, etc. In the three years I have attended Cabrillo, I have seen these qualities be practiced and respected. However, an unfortunate truth has been revealed about the name of our cherished school. Cabrillo College is named after a Spanish colonizer who committed cultural genocide. For this reason, let us change Cabrillo College's name to correspond with the school's beliefs and students. The act of honoring that kind of person instead of celebrating the indigenous peoples who occupied this land before us feels wrong and inappropriate. Some people may disagree with the changing of Cabrillo College's name for many different reasons. One of the main reasons is the amount of money that would have to be spent. Some may want the name to stay because eradicating the name erases the history of what he was and what he did. In addition to that, people believe that keeping the name allows us to forget the past and to continue learning how not to make the same mistakes. However, saying that changing the name erases history is highly ignorant and insensitive. It makes it seem as though all that happened is so easy to forget and push aside. Some BPOC, Black Indigenous people of color, still have memories passed down from their ancestors who suffered immensely either at his hand or by people like him. Whether or not the name changes, the history still exists, and it is our job to educate others on what occurred and how racism and prejudice are still prevalent in our country. Instead of keeping the name to not forget history, Cabrillo College can begin to offer classes that teach the history of our town and state and classes that emphasize systemic racism and how it affects minorities still to this day. All right, so the next student perspective comes from Evan David. Cabrillo College should not change its name. While many of the acts committed by Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, right, are certainly deplorable and nothing to be celebrated, the concrete benefits of renaming Cabrillo College are far outweighed by the cost of the process of rebranding, which is uh, set to exceed a million dollars. Changing the name of Cabrillo College would have very abstract benefits on an extremely small portion of the Cabrillo College community. And thus it is very difficult to measure these benefits on the community. These abstract benefits, however, would pale in comparison to the concrete benefits of investing this money into helping to allow disadvantaged students to achieve an education or even investing in better equipment or paying or pay for, for professors. There are many students who believe the name should be changed as Juan Rodrigo, Rodriguez Cabrillo does not demonstrate morals that support the values of Cabrillo College. However, keeping the name of Cabrillo College is far more useful in demonstrating how these values disagree with those of the college. By keeping the name of Cabrillo College, we force our staff and students to come to terms with this dark portion of our history as teachers feel obligated to explore that part of the school's legacy. By forcing these discussions, we allow the students to view how this man affected our lives today, as well as coming to terms with the terrible acts he committed rather than changing the name and risking forgetting about this part of our history and the suffering of the people he enslaved. And then the perspective of Yoselin Gonzalez. Should we rename a school because of its past connections? Throughout history, many civil rights activists and advocates have fought and are continuing to fight against racism, discrimination, injustice, and inequality to this day by using their voices. History classes have taught us the harsh conditions and unfair treatment towards POC communities, natives, and indigenous people and how it affected them. Considering that these groups take part in making the school be what it is, renaming Cabrillo College is a controversial subject. Even though many oppose the name change, we should alter the name and set an example of inclusivity and respect 
for all peoples. And thank you very much for that. Um, right here in the chat is the link to that document. There are about uh, probably like 10 more students who have uh, their ideas posted there. So thank you very much. Thank you, Adela. Thank you, Enrique. And thank you to Kendall, uh, to Sky, to all of the faculty involved. In, and I, particularly, I want to say thank you to all of the students tonight. Um, once again, this demonstrates that when Cabrillo yeah, puts- Yeah, wait, Matt, no, we ahead. need to do a clap. Unmute, like, we need to have like non- and, Absolutely, for, if for you'll join me, go ahead, everybody and unmute and feel free to clap Please, for there we go. all of that. So thank you all. Uh, we've had a terrific set of presentations. And as I was about to say, every time that um, Cabrillo College puts its students forward as ambassadors of the institution, they always shine and make us proud. So thank you all tonight for your bravery, your courage, and for your viewpoints. Really excited by the way that this turned out and I'm just really grateful again to Sky and Kendall and all the faculty involved in, in organizing tonight's event. I wanna remind folks that we have um, a couple of more sessions that are planned in our series. Uh, and I also wanna remind you to complete the survey that we have posted a couple of times in the chat that is designed to solicit your viewpoints, having listened to the speakers tonight to see how, how your um, education is going on this particular issue. So feel free to complete the survey. I wanna highlight the two upcoming um, panels that are coming next Thursday and then the following Tuesday. On April 29th, we have another outstanding uh, showcase of students. There we will be presenting award winners who submitted essays, poems, and artworks into the president's um, art, essay art uh, competition, an awards um, that was an awards event that was opened up this spring to actually deal with this name exploration controversy. So we had uh, more than 20 entries that were submitted. We have had a panel of judges review those submissions and we have some outstanding student voices that will come forward again next Thursday at our event. That'll be Thursday the 29th at 6 p.m. We'll have one, uh, one artwork, two poems, and three essays that will be showcased at that event. And then on May 4th, Tuesday, again at six o'clock, we'll have a presentation by the outstanding historian from UC Davis, Andres Resendez, who will be presenting on his book, The Other Slavery fantastic work of history that was honored with um, National Book Award finalists uh, and, um, and an outstanding event that we're, we're happy to have Andres coming to the campus. So um, thank you all for being here tonight. I think we're gonna wrap it up and I wanna give thanks again to all the students and thank you to everyone in attendance tonight for a terrific evening. Um, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you, students. You're everything. Thank you for having me. Thank you.